So uh, first, I want to thank uh, Danica Ortiz, who's, who was, uh, as mentioned by Sheila, a research associate at PIDS, who worked with me um, in this uh, paper. Uh, Mamsel is back. So, should I continue? Okay. Um, when we were starting with this uh, research project, we were not really, we started uh, not having this research in mind. The original design namin was to have a projection of um, healthy human resources for the Philippines. And during that time, when we were thinking about this project, uh, we felt that that was what was needed at that time. We, we, uh, DOH has this, um, was working on this project about um, how many re uh, human resources do we need? And we felt that we can contribute uh, to that discussion. But while we were doing, we were poking the data uh, during that time, we realized that it appears that, and this is uh, jumping the gun, uh, that we, it appears that we have many health human resources in the Philippines. And it's not the number that is really the issue, but the distribution, and that piqued our curiosity. What do we really know about the health workers in the Philippines? Um, Nasaan ba sila? Uh, ano yung edad nila? Uh, puro ba sila babae? Puro ba sila lalaki? And if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, when you look at the literature, and if you ask, what do we really know about healthcare workers around the world? It appears that we, we don't really know much. So most of the studies are in developed countries. So US, uh, Europe, Australia, Japan. And there were very few in developing countries. For the developing countries, many of these are in South Africa, in Africa, and in South America. And in terms of the cadres that were studied, um, much of those, uh, much of the cadres that were studied, focused on I know, on physicians. Uh, and there were not really much talk about the other cadres, about nurses, midwives, optometrists, opticians, uh, physiotherapists. And that is and that is a question that is the void that we want to uh, fill uh, in this research. Next slide, please. So these are the research questions that we have for this paper. Uh, very simple lang siya and very straightforward. First, uh, we want to characterize the supply of healthcare workers in the Philippines. Gano ba karami sila? Saan ba sila nakatira? Puro babae ba sila? Um, uh, saan sila nagtatrabaho? Anong klase mga, mga human resources sila? Health human resource. And then second, we want to analyze uh, the lo locational factors that influence the decision of healthcare workers. Because uh, we know na there's a reason bakit sila nang, if, they're, if they are uh, living in, they're originally from, uh, for example, Sambales and they're now working in, in NCR, why are they in NCR? What's in NCR? Or if they're not in NCR, why are they not in NCR? Why are, why are they here, essentially? So next slide, please. Um, so just in case uh, mag log out kayo dito sa seminar, these are the main results para upfront makuha nyo na yung uh, main storylines. One is that um, the health human resource in, uh, density, based on density, there appears to be sufficient sufficient for the Philippines if you look at the national figures. And this is nothing new. Uh, we've heard about this before. And when we decide, but when we disaggregate this into finer, finer um, aggregations like municipalities, cities, uh, dun tayo nagkaka problema. So at the national level, if we look at just the Philippines as a whole, wala masyadong, wala, parang wala problema kasi we have enough based on some thresholds. But when we look at municipalities and cities, dun na yung disparity. And what we found is that uh, uh, less than a quarter, less than 25% of cities and municipalities have the ideal density proposed by WHO. So less than 45 um, health workers per 10,000 population. Um, and over time, we, based on data, there is an increase in geographic dis, uh, concentration of this HHR, HHR uh, supply in the Philippines from 1990. And finally, uh, when we look at uh, the reasons why they are there, why uh, they locate where they practice where they are, uh, we found that um, improving um, ethnic diversity among health human resources appeared to not improve the supply 
of HHRs and LGUs with higher ethnic concentration, higher poverty rates, which is contrary to what we usually think or what was found in, in some literature. Um, ang, isa pang, ang isa pang contribution na itong paper na ito, itong research na ito, is that in previous research in the Philippines, uh, first, the data that they use are mainly based on, on, the, on the flow flow of health human resource in the Philippines. So usually number of board passers, number of um, new migrant workers, and these are good data. And they are able to build, from, from the flow data, they are able to build the, some estimate of the stock. But here we are using, I guess, uh, better data by using the uh, census. So in, in, uh, compared to the uh, uh, flow estimate from the board passers, Ang alam kasi na hindi lahat kasi ng board passers ay actually nag-work as health human resource. They, they have the certification, they have the qualifications, but they are not necessarily employed as health workers. And that's one beauty of using the census. And another contribution of this paper um, is that uh, when we analyze yung reasons kung bakit, nang, kung bakit nasa par isang particular na lugar yung isang uh, health uh, worker, we are looking at uh, revealed preferences and uh, based sa action nila instead of their stated preferences. For the many studies that I found in the Philippines, uh, much of the questions on identifying ano ba yung reasons ng mga workers, mga health workers kung bakit sila sa particular na lugar is because uh, the researcher asked the person, bakit ka nagtatrabaho dito? Ano yung mga mo? Which could mask, which has some beauty but could mask some of the some of the finer details of the reasons kung bakit nag-locate yung mga health workers where they are. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, okay. So the paper is based on, the, uh, this presentation is based on this paper. Uh, you can download it uh, through these links. Next slide. This is the outline of my presentation this afternoon. So. First, I would go over the supply of health human resources in the Philippines. I would go over the flow, would go, over, go over the stock. Uh, ano ba yung uh, uh, demographic characteristics ng mga healthcare workers natin? And then I'll go over the uh, analysis of the location decision of the healthcare workers, focusing on just three. So I'd look, we look into uh, physicians, nurses, and midwives. And finally, ano ba implications nito for policy? Next slide, please. So first question, um, how many health human, health human resources enter the system? How many leave per year? Uh, next slide. Okay. So this graph shows the number of board passers by health professions by year for the Philippines uh, five year, every five years from, two, from 2000 to 2015. So we have uh, we have these different uh, professions: so medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, nutritionist, dietitians, optometry, physical therapy, nursing, and midwifery. So among these cadres, nurses comprise the largest number of new healthcare professionals annually among the different cadres uh, presented here. So in 2000, in year 2000, about 4,600 among the 9,300 applicants passed the board exam for nursing. So this has ballooned to about 67,000 out of 175,000 applicants in 2010 before bumaba siya ng konti to 18,000, 1,800 passers in 2015. The country also produces a substantial number of physicians, uh, pharmacists, and midwifery professionals in terms of number of board passers. So particularly in more recent years, so papataas yung trend niya from 2000 to 2015. Among physicians, for example, the number of board passers in medicine increased from about 1,900 in 2000, in year 2000, to 5,500 in 2015. So this is particularly, uh, partly due to the increase in the number of applicants between 2000 and 2015, uh, which almost doubled from about 6,800, uh, which almost doubled to about uh, almost 7,000 in 2015. From, only about 3,500 in 2000. And partly then, due to the increase in passing rate, which has grown from um, 80%, uh, from 52% in 2000 to 80% uh, 
uh, in 2015. So the number of, so meron tayong pharmacy midwifery professional board passers, then on the other hand, also increased during this period. Uh, so among the cadres that you can see here, only dentists and physical therapists have posted declines in the number of board passers over the past uh, 15 years. So in 2000, in year 2000, about uh, 1,300 dentists and 2,400 physical therapists passed the board exams. That was in more recent years, in 2015, it has declined to 700 for dentists, uh, if we look at the written exam only, and then 1,000 physical therapists in 2015. Okay, so next slide, please. So, you Previous na slide, uh, that is the entry of new professionals. Uh, this slide naman tells you yung exit, uh, one form of exit, and that is through international migration. Um, scale natin siya by the number of new hire, uh, scale lang siya by the number of new board passers for that year. So ibig sabihin, pag more than, pag more than 100 siya, ibig sabihin mas malaki yung nag-migrate. Uh, the new hire for that year relative to the number of new board passers for that year. And for the most part, uh, increasing siya. So that is some, that is sort of uh, some uh, worrisome for especially for medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, uh, nutritionist, dietitians, uh, optometry, physical therapist. Uh, ang pababa lang ay yung nursing kasi uh, dumadami kasi yung yung uh, dumadami yung pumapasa ng nursing over the years. Uh, what's also worrisome is that for optometry and physical therapy, at least for 2015, mas marami yung nag-migrate kesa dun sa bagong pumasok na uh, professionals, for, for that professionals. So next slide, please. So, ang next na tanong, uh, so given this flow and exit, how many health human resources in total do we have? And previously, uh, uh, the previous estimates that we have are based on board passers. Uh, this time around, I am using census data from PSA to look at the number and the, and the characteristics of the health human resource. Uh, next slide, please. Pero before tayo pumunta doon, I want to segue. Uh, if we are counting the number of health human resources in the Philippines, is there an ideal number of HHR? And some P some groups, some uh, international organizations have estimated it uh, for many countries. So, and their estimates varies from 2.3 based on WHO in 2006 to 4.5, the more recent na estimate on WHO. Uh, can refer to the paper if you want to look at the details. But this is the range of their uh, suggested HHR density per thousand population. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, this table presents you the stock estimates of health human resource in the Philippines by type. So there are physicians, dentists, pharmacists, nutrition dietitians, uh, optometrists, opticians, physiotherapists, professional nurses, pro professional midwives, uh, technicians, and nursing and midwifery technicians. I just the nursing and midwifery technicians because they are a lot. Okay. So, yung Counting on dito is based on the number of people who, do at the time the census sinabi nila, ganito yung trabaho ko. Uh, pwede yung total number of uh, board certified na physicians ay mas malaki kaysa sa mga number na dito. Ang mga number na nandito ay yung lang nagsabi na during that time, ito yung trabaho nila. So, okay. Over the last 25 years, the talk uh, the numbers suggest that the country has experienced robust growth in the number of some uh, HHR cadres, including physicians, uh, pharmacists, physiotherapists, professional nurses, and medical and pharmaceutical technicians. Uh, with the stock, with the number of these uh, professionals growing faster than the 2.2% 2. Uh, 2 annual growth uh, recorded for the general population of the Philippines between 1990 and 2015. So, lagging behind, however, our dentists. Uh, growing only at 1.8% annually over 
over the last 25 years. Uh, nutritionists and dietitians growing at only 0.2% annually, and optometrists and opticians uh, grow to zero. But there appears to be a significant drop between 2010 and 2015, uh, between 1990 and 2010, and then a pickup uh, during 2015. For some professionals, particularly for me, advice, but this is, I guess, uh, some definitional change lang uh, in how we define uh, midwives. Okay. So, based on this, uh, we can assess, ano ba yung based on the inflow and outflow of workers in the Philippines and the population of the Philippines, we can calculate ano ba yung density of this HHR per 10,000, yung kanina 1,000 population, per, dito, per 10,000 population for this CAD race uh, between 1990 and 2015. So in 2015, for every 10,000 population in the Philippines, there were 34.9 professional nurses, 8.6 healthcare technicians, 5.2 physicians, 2.7 dentists, one physiotherapist, and less than one professional midwives, nutrition dietitians, optometrists, and nutritionists. So, except for dentists, nutritionists, and dietitians, optometrists, and opticians, and midwives, all the other uh, cadres uh, have increasing um, HHR density over the past 25 years. So, if yung um, earlier na pinakita ko na uh, threshold for HHR density is based on three cadres. So, HHR density ng combined physicians, uh, professional midwives and professional nurses. Uh, if we would use the 2.6 and 4.5 na estimates on WHO in 2016 as bounds, uh, and if you compare that with the uh, density for the Philippines, we can say that we are closer to the newer bound of the WHO. And if you compare it with the ILO na, na 4.1 yung kanilang highest, we are above that threshold, at least at the national scale. So that said, even if um, pasado tayo or close tayo sa pasado sa threshold na yon, uh, the supply of the different cadres of healthcare workers are highly uneven when we consider their geographic distribution within the country. Here we estimated the uh, spatial disparity using Gini coefficient. The idea is that kung zero ka, zero yung Gini coefficient, uh, lahat ng HHR distribution, ng HHR density, that is proportional siya dun sa population. So, parang equal distribution for population over the whole country. Uh, tapos, on the other hand, kung one yung Gini coefficient, ibig sabihin, nasa isang lugar lang lahat ng HHR natin sa Pilipinas. And between 1990 and 2015, we can see an increasing inequality in the spatial distribution of these uh, of these different categories of healthcare workers that we consider in this uh, report. The, sp uh, the spatial Gini coefficient is... Uh, uh, is highest among physicians. So, yung Gini index niya is 84, 0.84. Dentists, 0.79. Uh, medical and pharmaceutical technicians, pharmacists, physiotherapists, and professional nurses. So, some of the cadres that, ha that have experienced the greatest degree of polarization over the past 25 years uh, include a physiotherapist. So, additional 28 percentage points dun sa kanyang Gini Nutritionist and dietitians plus 25 percentage points sa kanyang Gini coefficient, pharmacist plus 23 percentage points, and medical and pharmaceutical technicians uh, plus 21 percentage points. Uh, um, over this period, yung physicians sa simula pa lang matas na yung kanyang uh, Gini coefficient at about uh, 0.7 to 1990. Next slide, please. So, who are the health workers? Ano ba yung mga characteristics ng mga health care workers natin? Next slide. So, first we look at HHR uh, distribution by sex. Uh, from this graph, we can see that the local supply of HHR is female-dominated, uh, except for physicians and physiotherapists in the 1990s. So, more equal yung physicians in the 1990s. And mas konti yung babae, babae sa physiotherapist during the 1990s. But in more recent years, uh, across the board, mas maraming babae sa ating uh, health human resource. Uh, 
Next slide, please. Uh, for much of the cadres, uh, there is increasing feminization. You can see it among physicians, dentists, physiotherapists, uh, health associates, and technicians. And for some, next slide, please. And for some, even if it's female dominated originally in, in the 1990s, in 2015, made a version for gay uh, Next slide, please. Well, here naman, we look at the uh, distribution by age. So across the board, if you look at physicians, dentists, pharmacists, physiotherapists, nurses, and yung iba pinagsama-sama ko na, generally, the HHR population of Philippines is generally young. So yung kanilang, for example, the median age among physicians and dietitians that uh, dietitians was 42, uh, so mga 30s siya in 2015, oh, no, 40s, so 40s, 30s siya uh, between 1990 and 2015. Next slide, please. That said, uh, even if the healthy human resource population is young, may be considered young, uh, some cadres are aging. If you look at the age distribution profile, so merong shift towards the left, so papatanda. And this is very apparent for dentists. And But for some, like nurses and pharmacists, uh, it remains na bata pa rin yung population ng mga healthy human resources natin. Next slide, please. Uh, ito naman, uh, by marital status, largely married yung mga health human resources natin except for pharmacists, uh, physiotherapists, and nurses. And to, to a large degree, this may be uh, conditioned, sa age, conditioned by the age distribution of the healthcare workers. So, mga bata kasi itong mga ito, kalorihan, kaya hindi pa sila kapag-asawa. But uh, as you can see from the other uh, cadres, uh, mas maraming mas maraming may asawa na kasi mas matanda yung age distribution ng no kadre na yun. Uh, next slide, please. Dito naman, uh, we are looking at the distribution by ethnolinguistic minority status. By ethnolinguistic minority, what we mean is that uh, there is ano, less than 1 million uh, population na nagsasalita ng no language na yun based sa census. So over the past uh, 20 years, between 1990 and the 2010 census, we can see an improving uh, inclusion, representation among ethnolinguistic minority, among health human resources in the Philippines. But uh, if you go to the slide, if you go to the next slide, you can see that if you compare it to the general population, although there is an increasing trend towards uh, greater representation, uh, yung share ng ethnolinguistic minority among HHRs are actually less compared to the national average for the general population. So it's, it's improving, but hindi pa tayo umabot dun sa uh, sana uh, same representation as the general population. Next slide, please. Uh, this one naman tells us about the region of residence. Mamaya, we'd go deeper into municipalities and cities. Pero in terms of region, largely, yung mga healthy human resources natin, except for midwives and technicians, they live in Mega Manila. Uh, and it has been the case uh, for the past 25 years. And for the most part, hindi nag-move yung share ng Mega Manila. That includes NCR, uh, Palabar, Solon, Region 3. Dun sa share of health human resources in the Philippines. Next slide. So ito na yung, I guess, more exciting uh, part. So where are the health workers? So alam natin saan sila nakatira, but it's not necessarily na doon sila nakatira, doon din sila nakatrabaho. Uh, for example, I have this cousin who, who lives in Zambales, pero every week pumunta siya na Manila to work here. So next please. So this is the health human resource composite ng uh, composed of physicians, nurses, and midwives. Lagi nagamit ng WHO and ILO to compute the issue. 
Twin City, uh, by municipality, city of residence, uh, city of residence 2015, uh, yung inset ng sa taas na blue, that is uh, NCR. Yung color coding natin, as you go from yellow sa gitna to red, ibig sabihin papa liit our density. And as you go from yellow to blue, uh, papataas yung issue our density. And gusto natin yung buong Pilipinas nandun sa taas, nasa blue. Ibig sabihin, we have more uh, healthy human resources per person across the board. But here you can see that uh, largely, yung mga kulay blue natin ng mga parts ng mga munisip munisipyo at mga city, they are north, ibig sabihin, uh, north na geographically, so Luzon, and north economically, north, ibig sabihin, uh, mas mayayaman ng mga lugar. So you can see yung mga um, city centers, yung mga, uh, ang tawag dito, mga capital ng mga probinsya, and even yung, I'm not sure if you can see it here, uh, there's this small blue dot sa may bandang palolete because there's a school there. Okay, next slide, please. So when we decide, we can also disaggregate it by cadre. So we have physicians, professional nurses, and midwives. Uh, ganun pa rin yung system. Pag pa blue, pataas yung density. Pag pa red, pa kaunte. And for um, for the physicians, makita mo yung blue karamihan dun sa mga mayayaman ng mga lugar. So NCR, mga regional centers, mga capital. Uh, yung professional nurses is blue almost everywhere except for many parts, many parts of Mindanao. And for professional midwives, it's red. So I'm not sure if this is just definitional change sa ating occupational classification or it's because uh, talagang red siya. Okay, next slide. So kung ganun yung picture, so natin, bakit sila nandun? Anong meron doon? And kanina na-discuss, na, na, na-mention ko about the economy, but there could be other reasons why they are there. Uh, in the literature, they are saying that uh, many of these uh, health professionals, uh, usually kung saan sila nag-aral, malapit lang doon sila nagtatrabaho. Or halimbawa, kung meron silang um, rural background, ibig sabihin, uh, tumira sila sa isang rural place before they studied uh, yung profession nila or meron silang asawa, anak, kaibigan na tiga doon or they visited that place. So meron affinity with, uh, sa rural area kaya sila nag-locate sa rural area. Uh, ang tanong, do we have that same observations when we look at uh, Philippine data? Next slide please. So in this study, we use a discrete choice location model. So uh, usually, dalawa yung, dalawa yung ginagamit na model. One is stated preference. Tinatanong nila yung tao, uh, sa, gusto, mo bang tumira, gusto mo bang magtrabaho dito? Bakit ka magtrabaho dito? Or around that. So tatanungin mo yung tao, bakit ganun yung decision nila? Uh, sa ginawa natin, uh, inobserve natin kung nasaan sila. So... Um, uh, inobserve natin ano yung actual na decision nila. So, revealed preference. Tapos, pag nakita natin na nandito sila, gano'n sila karami dyan, ano yung characteristics ng area na yun? So, this is based on a random utility framework na ang main idea is that a person, in this case, a human, health human resource, will choose to work where their expected net benefit may be highest. So, it depends pa paano ba nila in-order yung mga bagay-bagay. Because some people would some people would prefer yung uh, malapit sa kainan, maraming restaurants, or hindi man malapit sa trabaho, so may hospital, or pwedeng malapit sa school kung meron sila mga anak. So pwedeng iba-iba yung, yung uh, ordering yun. But that's the idea na in-order natin yung mga location kung saan tayo yung trabaho. Tapos mamimili tayo, saan tayo pinakamasaya, essentially. So we estimated this using a binomial regression model, and we have separate estimates by... Uh, Cadre. So we have separate estimates for physicians, nurses, and midwives, and by demographic characteristics of these uh, cadres, so by sex, marital status, uh, ethno-linguistic group, and age, uh, because yung una, uh, baka iba yung preference set ng mga different cadres, at also, baka iba yung preference ng babae sa lalaki, ng asawa sa wala, sa bata, sa matanda. Next slide. 
Okay. So, yung idea, essentially, nung ginagawa natin is, is to look at, una, how many HHR are working in a particular area, and then looking at what their specific characteristics may be found there to explain uh, kung bakit ganun kadami yung mga uh, workers na nandun. So, to be able to do this, we use the census data to get the, the supply of health human resource by, by uh, area. And then for the economy, we have different indicators. So we included uh, controls for poverty rate, per capita LGU income, so nightlight luminosity, so satellite data. Uh, yung uh, nightlight luminosity is, sometimes, is often used as a measure of economic activity. So the idea, pag mas maliwanag yung area na yun, mas maraming economic activity. Um, we also controlled for amenities. So kung city ba siya, yung lugar na yon, meron bang hospital, meron bang landline, kasi baka, pref, baka may mga taong preferred na um, madaling, madali yung communication. Uh, meron bang college doon? Meron bang tertiary education facility? And then we also controlled for ethnolinguistic concentration. Ang idea is to have that uh, Later, later sa discussion, kung ikaw ba ay ethnolinguistic minority, meron ka bang affinity sa isang lugar na mataas yung ethnolinguistic concentration? Okay, next slide. And so yung tables, they are in the report, you are free to download and check. But isasummarize ko na lang dito kasi marami yung tables at, at malalaki. So una, uh, where are the HHRs? Uh, we found that they are more li likely to work in areas with hospitals, uh, with landline network. So uh, they are likely to be found in cities and in areas with greater economic activity, especially for nurses and midwives. Uh, they are li less likely to work in areas with um, higher economic concentration, uh, higher ethnolinguistic concentration. So mas kaunti yun nandun sa Itogon, for example. Uh, they are less likely to work in areas with higher poverty incidence, especially for, particularly for physicians and nurses. So habang papahirap yung lugar, uh, mas marami yung mahirap, uh, less likely ka makakita ng physician o ng nurses. But not for midwives. Next slide, please. So how about by characteristics? Meron bang pagkakaiba yung preference ng uh, by sex, by age, uh, and the other characteristics? So... We found that there appears to be no apparent systematic difference in preferences uh, by sex and by age group. So, lalaki at babae, pa, hindi naman nagkakaiba yung kanilang uh, preference for cities or for uh, economic activity, uh, even for among across generations. So, yung bata around 20s, tsaka matatanda around 60s, tsaka yung middle, uh, uh, yung prime age, mga 30s to 50s. So, except for elderly midwives, so yung mga midwives natin na uh, age 60 plus, mga seniors na midwives, uh, based on our SMS, they are less likely to be found in richer LGUs. So, nandun sila sa general, uh, generally mas may hirap na mga lugar. And they are, although they are more likely to work in cities, which sounds uh, contradictory, pero yung model kasi natin, they are adjusting for these characteristics. So, given na cities siya, pero mas mayaman yung isang LJU, uh, less likely siya nandun. Or given the same na, na income ng LJU, pero city yung isa, more likely nandun siya sa city. So ganun siya pwedeng i-interpret. Next slide, please. So by marital status, um, although... In general, physicians are more likely to work. Lahat ng physicians are more likely to work in cities and in hospitals. Yung mga singles, they have a slight aversion. So, less likely uh, relative to ever married women to be found in cities and in hospitals. So, if you are targeting yung mga DTTP, more likely yung mga singles ang willing na mapare-locate sa rural areas because meron silang slight aversion for cities and hospitals. Although, in general, they are more likely to be found there, pero compared to married uh, physicians, pwedeng mas sila yung mag-relocate to non-cities at saka mga areas na walang hospital. Uh, also, single midwives are more likely to work in areas with greater economic activity relative to those ever married. So yung pag 
kung yung single na physician more likely to work dun sa sa hindi city yung mga single na midwives we found that they are more likely to work in areas na na mas marami kang activity so ibig sabihin uh, may may mall or to, to that effect and for nurses naman we found no statistical difference between the preference among single and married uh, nurses next slide please so ito yung um, interesting so by ethnolinguistic minority status we found in the literature na kung meron ka affinity dun sa area, more likely na dun ka mag-work. There's some tendency. But what we found uh, here is the reverse. So, HHRs, uh, physicians, nurses, midwives from minority background are less likely to work in areas with higher poverty rates or with higher ethnic concentration relative to non-minority HHRs, which is contradictory uh, to what we found uh, in the literature in some other countries. Next slide, please. So, uh, what does this mean for policy? To mga results natin. Next slide. First, to, to summarize, uh, there appears to be sufficient supply of HHR at the national level. So, based sa national statistics natin, uh, yung HHR density natin for nurses, uh, nurses, physicians, and midwives closely approximates, even surpasses some of the international threshold ng HHR density. But over the past 25 years, we saw an increasing geographic polarization uh, towards better economically endowed locations, so okay. cities, city centers, which suggests that uh, many areas in the Philippines may have limited access to healthcare professionals. As I mentioned earlier, uh, only 25% of, uh, less than 25% of LGUs, city municipal LGUs in the Philippines have, um, have the, uh, are above the threshold uh, proposed by WHO. Next slide, please. So, also, while HHR supply in the Philippines is generally increasing, so some cadres like nutritionists, dietitians, optometrists, and opticians, and physiotherapists have declining HHR density, uh, potentially, potentially as a result of net, well, essentially as a result of net exit among these professionals, uh, potentially because of out migration. Uh, migration to other countries, which may be critical in the long term. So right now, uh, marami pa naman sila, pero in the longer term, if this continues, uh, it, it may pose some problems for us. Next slide, please. Um, going now to the location decision of healthcare professionals. So we found that uh, healthy human resources are more likely to practice in areas with greater earnings potential. Uh, in areas where there are amenities, so mga cities, merong hospitals, and potentially where they are trained, so kung mga cities ito. But contrary to previous results uh, in the literature, uh, we found that HHRs from ethnolinguistic minorities are not more likely to practice in more economically depressed areas, so poor, poor regions, or in regions with higher ethnolinguistic concentration. Because um, yung ating classic notion, yung ating na... Uh, Pag ikaw ay isang indigenous people, you are more likely to work in an IP community. And what the data says is that that's not necessarily true in the case of the Philippines. Um, next slide. So here are some thoughts that, uh, that run through our head during that time when we were writing this. So what, what are the implications for policy? One, uh, what we based on the results na, na, na HHRs are more likely to be in areas where there is um, high uh, higher uh, LGU income per capita. So for us, it means that uh, boosting household incomes through local economic development, uh, it appears to be uh, essential in ensuring the economic viability of any professional practice, uh, particularly in healthcare. Uh, we're saying this because for the longest time, uh, DTTB, yung ating focus in DTTB is to just uh, augmenting or yung stopgap measure natin para mabigyan ng mga HHRs, yung mga underserved areas. And another, for us, okay, I think another way to do it is, well, boost the economy in that area. So para yung mga tao mismo, they can afford uh, physicians and physicians can go there. And, and we'll just... Next slide, please. Right. 
So the second implication, uh, policy implication, is that uh, there may be a need to uh, re reassess common and deep-rooted beliefs on healthcare professional practice. So one is about the altruistic motives. So although, and this is from the other reports that we've seen on why do uh, particularly physicians work in rural areas because they have this altruistic motive na para sa bayan to. But I guess uh, uh, there is some space to disengage from this idea that having this altruistic motive may not be enough. And, and having this, although it's important, it may not necessarily be the most effective or most sustainable to have uh, the supply of healthcare workers uh, in the rural areas. Uh, second is that targeting minorities, uh, ethnic minorities, ethnolinguistic minorities, may be good for inclusion, but based on our results, hindi naman sila, they are not more likely to go uh, to underserved areas, so sa mga areas na poor or higher ethnolinguistic, ethnolinguistic concentration. So, uh, although it's good for inclusion, mas marami tayong ethnolinguistic minorities in, in the HHR pool, it may not necessarily be good for access among, uh, among the communities. Uh, and finally, uh, the last uh, policy implication that we thought when we were uh, in this paper was that uh, with the apparent undersupply of HHRs in, man, in many areas across the country, it may be prudent to explore um, alternative modes of service delivery. And uh, the pandemic that we have now has ano ba, facilitated some of this uh, through technology solutions. So telemedicine, marami na tayo nakita telemedicine, most of them Facebook or even DOH. Uh, but there may also be a need not just in the technology, but also in the practice. Uh, for example, in the US and in some other countries like UK, they allow uh, nurse practitioners. So these are nurses with additional certification that can uh, check uh, check patients and dispense uh, medicines, uh, prescribe medicines. So I guess that could be explored also in the Philippines. But then, syempre, meron tayong um, kailangan gawin sa ating, ano, uh, paano ba pinapractice yung mga professions na to in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, maraming salamat. That's the end of my presentation. If you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them.